Welcome to the Life is Relationships podcast, where we share biblical truths about marriage, parenting, and discipleship. The desire of CTCI is to see the hearts of individuals and families restored in their relationship to the Father, and for them to be empowered to have thriving, godly relationships that impact the communities around them. I'm your host, AJ Selby, and on today's episode, we'll have Susan Pons joining us. She'll be sharing from one of her favorite Train Terrain teachings that she gives about covering. We'll talk about what covering looks like biblically, how Susan has experienced it in her own life, and how we can apply it to our lives today. This will be part one of our conversation, and part two will be released next week. Take a listen. Well, hey, Miss Susan, thank you so much again for joining us today. Hi, AJ. It's wonderful to be here again. Today, we're going to be talking about covering. You talk about this in your Train Terrain teachings and just the importance of it. And can you just explain to us you know, what really is covering? And then, like, why is it important in today's world? Yes. Well, uh, for one thing, if we, if and when we read the Word of God, covering is very important. Um, it's a lost, should I say, lost art in today's world. Um, many times, I really believe that uh, the woman's movement, political correctness, there are many... Um, movements out there that have um, just excluded covering or even seen the need for it. But I love to teach this um, lesson because it's something in the school of life and marriage and other aspects. I've had to learn the wonderful graces of God that come in with covering um, the word covering is a Hebrew word, and the Hebrew word is kasa, K-A-S-A. And covering means to place something over or upon as for protection, concealment, or warmth. Covering means to shield, to shelter, to embrace. And I love this to hide the wrongful or embarrassing action of another by providing an alibi or acting in the other's place. And the last two definitions, covering means to hide and to keep secret. And as I began my, my walk with the Lord, I had to learn that Christ is the head of man which is a covering. Man is the head of woman, which is a covering. And God is the head of Christ, who is a covering. And in today's world, we have uh, accentuated the woman's movement, the political correctness. We are... Um, I, would, I don't want to use the word equal because we are equal, but we all have different roles when we're under God's uh, direction. The opposite of covering is to expose, to reveal, to open, show, to tell, to unmask, to abandon, to disregard, exclude, ignore reject. So covering, as, as long as it doesn't go into control, is a beautiful thing. Yeah. And covering in marriage, it means provision. It means pro pro emotional covering. It means physical covering. It means spiritual covering. And 1 Timothy 5, 8 says, But if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of his own household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Timothy is very explicit about that. And so covering is just this marvelous uh, safety net for the man 
who is under Christ and for the woman who is under the man. And um, control is something else. And I believe the word covering sends people running (laughs) in different directions. But control is something else. Control is dominance. It's one-man rule. It's unrestricted power. So if, if we're operating in God's covering, it is a safety net. And it doesn't mean that women are these mousy little uh, beings who, if the husband says, you know, you can't go do this, or you have to do this, or that sort of thing. That's not what it means. Mm -hmm. It just means that I love you enough to keep you from harm, to to provide for you, to be there emotionally for you, to provide for my children. So it's it ushers in godly ways. Do you do you feel like I know that we're talking about this primarily in the context of marriage, but do you feel like covering is it's far more than just outside of marriage? Because I see, um, I feel like there's an aspect of accountability that comes with covering. That there, are, you know, I've I myself at one point was as a young man I wasn't walking in accountability or having anybody that was a covering right. over me, and so I, I've. I've really found value in this, not just in relation to God being the covering over me and me the covering of my wife, yes. but for me to walk with other men and have other men that are uncovering over me as mentors and discipling me. Um, do you think that, do, does this fall into that same realm or is that something that I, I maybe need to look at differently? No, absolutely, AJ. I remember just to go along with that, Our girls, when they graduated from college, were put in places of responsibility over men in in their uh, occupations that they had sought. And I remembered our daughter Nikki calling one day, calling her dad one day, and say, "Dad, I this is really hard because these these women that I'm working with, they are belittling the boss who is who was a man." And she said, I, I just don't want to get caught up in this. And so Larry gave her some steps to take as she was with her, with her boss. Now, she had other men working under her and things like that. And thankfully, Larry had given her directions how to approach them out of respect. But what happened with her boss, it was, uh, it was just I think a God thing, uh, when the end of the year came and they were giving out awards in the company that she was with, she received the national award for the most sales. That's not the point of what I'm going to talk about. But when her boss got up to give her the, the award, he started crying. And uh, so when Nikki was telling us this, I said, well, Nikki, that's because you treated him with respect. Huh, yeah. And you you learned how to be respectful in the workplace. And so it was it's it's so important, AJ. It's important for young men, if they want to follow God's ways, to have a godly mentor. I mean, the Word became flesh. That's what it talked about Jesus. But we all live in a flesh-filled world, and it's it's so important. And uh, um, I think a mentor needs to be someone older. Yes. We've had young men here who say, yeah, I have a mentor. He's two years older than I am. And, you know, that's that could work, but um, to have to be a young man or a young woman— who wants to keep their way, their pathway straight with the Lord is so important. Yeah. I think uh, as for being a wife and a mother, it is very necessary to realize that covering, it's not only a protection, but it's a shield. And that also we play an important part in covering our household, in covering our children. 
And I think probably a most wonderful experience is for a husband and wife to come together and be that covering for their children. Um, I look back on these kind of times as some of the best and most meaningful that that we had as a family. Uh, covering is, it is a mysterious order from God, but it keeps the world in its ways from entering into our front doors. And I believe as teenagers, when our children became teenagers, we could not just drop the covering that they needed uh, in being teenagers or even going off to college. We told our kids, because my two sisters and I, we went off to college, and I have to say that our main goal was to have a good time. (laughs) We all got a degree, but, you know, I look back on my mother and father who grew up in— in poverty, and then went through the Depression, through World War II, all of these things. And they thought they were sending us into the same world that they were at 18 and 20 years old. And it was not. It was not the same world. And so when our children went off to college, we said, look, you get to go to college, but you're to uh, morally, spiritually, Academically, you're to toe the line in those three areas, or guess what? You get to come back home. And I learned that lesson years later before I had a chance to even say thank you to my parents uh, for allowing, for spending the money on, on us to have that collegiate experience. One funny story I will tell you, though, when I was in high school, Now, I've already told you that my mother was kind of an old-school mother. I was a cheerleader. And most of the time, in away games, we had an adult that drove the cheerleaders. Well, on this particular game, the adult could not go. So the senior girl on our cheerleading squad was to drive us 20 miles away to an away game. Now, mind you, Larry played football. And so my mother said to me as I was going out the door, shaking my pom-poms, she said, Susan, I'll be listening and I'll give you enough time to get back home. And I said, okay, as I shook my (laughs) pom-poms. Well, on the way home, the girl, all the cheerleaders said, let's stop at the Red Pig Barbecue. We're hungry. And I was thinking, hmm, my mother said, I'll be listening you know, but who was I to stop these girls from eating? And in those days, you you know, there were no cell phones. And this particular barbecue place had no pay phone. And I did go to the woman and ask her if I could make a collect call. And she said, absolutely not. (laughs) So it took, I think everybody heading back to our hometown stopped at the Red Pig Barbecue. But anyway, we were in there about two hours. Oh, goodness. Yeah. To to get served. So on the way home, we're in the car, and I'm in the middle of the back seat thinking, oh, goodness, what is going to happen with this? Well, (laughs) I no longer thought that. Then the blue light went around and around behind the car. The the senior girl pulled the car over, and this big, burly highway patrolman got out of the car the girl rolled down her her window, if you can remember days where you roll down the window, <laughs> and he stuck his head in the car and he said, is there a girl named Susan Corbett in here? And I raised my hand and he looked at me and grinned. He said, honey, you better get on home. Your mama <laughs> is waiting. Oh, my goodness. And so she was. She was waiting. But and you I bet see, she was not happy either. Oh, not at all. <laughs> not at all. But that was, I didn't realize that at the time, but that was the covering. And another funny thing that happened to one of my friends who, who dated a particular boy, I'll call her mother Mrs. James. But she didn't show up on time. And And her mother got very worried. Well, there was a place in our town, uh, it was called the River, and that's where young people went to go park. 
That was called parking back then. Well, Mrs. James got her flashlight, and she drives down to the river, and she starts shining it in this car to see if her daughter's in that car or this one or this one. Well, finally, she comes to the car where Mary Ann's uh, boyfriend was, was, and she said, and he, he rolled down the car and he said, Miss James, it's not Mary Ann, I promise. And Mrs. James uh, said, it better not be. Oh, goodness. But you see, it was a different era back then. There was a covering that was happening. It wasn't a perfect world by any imagination. But as I look back on those years, I was covered. Yeah. And it was the best thing that could have happened. And so covering now, people look at it in a negative way. They look at it, they go straight to control, and covering isn't control. Yeah. I think that's such a, I mean, both of those stories really paint a really clear picture of, with covering, there's a there is a standard mm-hmm. of how things are to go and what's to be expected. But it's not from a control point. It's from a place of wanting to protect. Absolutely. And Larry and I stand to have stood toe-to-toe through many circumstances with each other and with our children, but we've learned to come out in agreement. And we would have our children, we would say, you go, you just go stand in the den while your father and I talk. And you know, when we came out, we were together, and it, our our children learned that you couldn't go to one. They knew which one to come to for the answer they wanted, but— As children do. As children do, as we all did as children. <laughs> but they learned. They did not think that we ever disagreed, and we disagreed a lot, but we came out together. For Just for, for those listening— um, what if there's a parent that's kind of struggling with with how do I how do I really walk out how do I walk this out in providing to be a covering for my children without being controlling or or making these um, or trying to be a covering out of a place of fear what would you recommend somebody do Well, I I think we all have to find our places individually in that. I'll tell you, my heart goes out to single parents, especially single mothers who are trying to work, trying to keep up with their children, to do all of these things. But covering, if the spirit of it uh, that you're giving out is a spirit of provision, of shielding, of protecting, that that is one kind of spirit. The other kind... The controlling is a demanding. Mm. And I think there's a difference between requiring than and demanding. Yeah. I think requiring can be spoken of in very um sane terms and and caring terms. I think demanding brings up something in all of us that says, I w- just because you said that, I will not do it. But um Covering has love yeah. in it. Yeah, I think I think that's really beautiful in that um, covering covering has a requirement, which means that there's a standard. Yes, and then love is a part of that, and how that is walked out, and that's the same with our relationship with the Lord. Um, he lays out the standards very clearly for us. Yes, and he is our covering for for our life in that. And it's not demands that he's placed on us that he's, you know, this controlling almighty individual, but he's set a standard before us so that he can walk with us and protect us and for us to be in life with him. Yes. And that things would go well with us. And um, they're not meant for our harm. They're meant for our good. Well, thank you, Ms. Susan, for just taking the time to really explain to us what covering is and mm-hmm. what it looks like in relationship with the Lord as well as within our as well as within our own families and even in our business place. 
you know, it's it's really interesting to look at um, what it means to either be a covering or submit yourself to yes. a covering. And I think that that's something that a lot of people maybe aren't aren't as aware of today. Yes. Um, as we're getting ready to close out, do you have, you know, any final words for somebody that may be struggling with wondering, am I walking in covering or am I providing covering? Well, I, I think both of those require us to go to the Lord. It really does. I remember we had a woman here once who was a pastor, and she was explaining everything about her husband, and it wasn't good what he was doing. But all of a sudden, the words came out of one of our mouths, and we said, but you're wrong in your rightness. Mm. And she was being wrong in that she was trying to cover her husband and tell him the exactly what he should and should not do instead of coming underneath him and having that conversation where your spirit is right in in explaining to him uh, what he was uh, in error about. But you can be wrong in your rightness. And I think many times in today's world, again, we all think we're right. And I think young people especially need to learn that covering is for their good and that even we as women need to learn that. And especially, God bless you men, you have Christ to answer to for covering. <laughs> so yes, you, you do. do have a big load on your shoulders. You do. Well, Miss Susan, thank you again so much for coming and and just sharing. Um, it's It's very interesting to see covering walked out in different ways, in different areas of life, but it all comes down to the importance of covering in terms of our relationship with the Lord and how we walk that out with those around us. Yes. It's a foreign concept in today's world, AJ, but it's a right, it's a right concept from the Word of God. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one, and we would love if you left us a review. For more information about CTCI and our upcoming programs, be sure to check out ctcilife.org. This podcast is a production of Christian Training Center International. It is produced by AJ Selby, Rebecca Wall, and Seth Stradling. It is edited, mixed, and mastered by AJ Selby.